Well, that was a nice journey through time and space. And for those of you who didn't see the last five minutes of the previous episode, that is the TARDIS. Yes, all of time and all of space in my time traveling toilet. And um, what happened was in the last episode, if you didn't get around to seeing it, and you must see it because it hasn't had anywhere near enough views, right? Um, I ended it by getting in a spaceship and going to another planet on another galaxy. Um, and I had this bet with Elon that his ship, which I borrowed, would not be able to take me to that other planet on that other galaxy as fast as the TARDIS could take me back here again. So what I have to do is just check, let me see. Oh bugger, according to the chronometer, the TARDIS has actually taken me <laughs> a second and a half longer to get back. Nevertheless, it can go through time and it can do a few other things as well. And it's infinitely big on the inside too. So first I've got to shut the door. That's great, eh? But um, yes, I know, there'll be those out there that say, yeah, but even the doctor can do that. There's one thing that the doctor cannot do. He can't collapse it into an app. So let me just do this. Brilliant, eh? Yeah, so that's one thing the Doctor cannot do. Right, so, without any further ado, on with the show. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am recording this on the 19th of September, 2024. And I'm basically up on a hill, uh, underneath a canopy of uh, Jamaica cherry trees. And um, I decided to go out for a nice long walk. Um, it's quite brutal going out for a walk in this heat, in this climate. But luckily enough, it's sort of partly cloudy today and I've got my Panama hat. So I thought, yeah, fuck it. Let's just go out and do it. Why not? I hope you liked the Turdis sketch. Um, it took me a while to work out how to do that. Um, and that's something I wanted to do um, for a very long time. So I know it's all getting a little bit silly, isn't it? Anyway, I shall have to get out the shade and go a bit more into the light. Right, so a couple of things I want to talk about today, actually. Well, I'm going to start with those two things. I did make the, um, I say, the thumbnail and the title a little bit on the clickbaity side, but no one watched my last video. So if you didn't watch my last video, you have to watch it. There's a great science fiction ending to it in the last five minutes or so, right? So you didn't see it go watch my last video you buggers right so anyway firstly what I want to talk about is Donald Trump's second assassination attempt I mean it does make you wonder it seems like they don't want him around it seems like that the, they really want him to be brown bread at this point doesn't it um, this person anyway what was his name again Ryan Ruth bit of a funny name one of those ones that sort of rolls off the tongue with a lot of R's and I saw a photo of him where he had blue hair on one side and yellow hair on the other making himself look like a walking Ukraine flag and um, you know a proper sort of a lefty activist Democrat pro-Ukraine stereotype of a person and uh, yeah so I'm looking at the world at the moment and of course you know how the Western world has gone pretty much everywhere now has been sold off to the globalist puppets of the sinister secret organizations that seem to have done a hostile takeover to our world at the moment the Western world in particular and it does seem to me like um, they want America as well and they are so desperate they want America too because it's the last place um, where you know something in the Western world representing freedom of speech or the freedom of a lot of things being enshrined into their constitution um, exists and of course they are desperate to try to take that away they want to turn um, America pretty much into Europe or Canada or something like that or Australia you know make it go the same way and um, I mean I don't know you know one way or the other because it's really difficult to know and um, the amount of research you could do you just don't know what is misleading you don't know what is fake fake news you don't know um, what is whether it's a conspiracy or not or whether it's a cock-up or not but you know the fact is that like when I actually think about what is causing these rogue individuals if they're rogue individuals because there's two theories either they are kind of like a secret service moles who've been MK altered in order to do something like this. This is one school of thought. Another school of thought is that they are basically rogue individuals who have become radicalized and indoctrinated, right? So one thing that is really obvious, and it goes right the way back to, for me, to 2016, was when, um, what's his name, Richard Spencer, who is a bit of an ethno-nationalist, someone that you could say 
is plausibly far right, you know, out of all of these people. Um, he was being interviewed and some Antifa type come up and sucker punched him in the side of the head. You remember that? I think it was about eight years ago now, something like that, when that happened. And there was this kind of, uh, we call it, punch a Nazi thing that was going around, right? The problem with thinking like that is that, you know, you, there's Trump derangement syndrome, but there is also Hitler derangement syndrome. Now, of course, you know, I'm obviously not saying that going in the direction of the far right is a good thing. I mean, I made my take on that, my opinion on that, very, very obvious. But the problem is that when um, politics is going further and further to the left, to the point where it's going to the far left, and like I say, the far ends are both the same because they, they lead to the same outcome, pretty much. They lead to collectivism, totalitarianism, authoritarianism, no freedom of speech, the government and the state controlling everything. So it doesn't really matter when you get to the far reaches of the political spectrum. Um, that's what happens, right? And of course, you know, there was this thing, because the world seems to have what I call Hitler derangement syndrome more than anything else. Everyone I don't like is Hitler. And, oh, we can't let another Hitler come along. You know, that sort of thing. But they don't really put Hitler in the same umbrella as all the other people that are out there, you know. And there have been plenty of these dictators. For some reason, Hitler stands out amongst, you know, let's say, Chairman Mao, Stalin, and all of that lot. And so, because... Um, uh, they have this thing about fascism, um, which, of course, you know, from what I can tell, has never really, in the country I grew up in, the UK, there was never any chance of fascism taking over. Not at any point was there, you know. Um, there was Oswald Mosley with his British Union of Fascists, but he kind of got laughed off. I mean, people couldn't take him seriously. Then, of course, you know, in the 70s and bits of the 80s, there was the National Front. Again, they only appeared uh, to be credible to a very small amount of like bother boot wearing skinheads and people like that and then of course um nick griffin was the last famous political far-right person who again um had no chance they put him on question time and um he never recovered from that so i'm looking and thinking well there is no issue of what i can say when it comes to the far right compared to other extreme ideologies but the problem is that, like, if people convince themselves that certain people are basically Hitler come back in this uh, post punch and Nazi far left um, world that the Western world finds itself in, they then end up becoming justified in thinking that they can kill him because they really do believe, right? Without the shadow of a doubt, they really do believe that they are saving the future from another Hitler, from another genocide, from another mass killing of many people. They really do believe in their heart of hearts that by trying to assassinate Trump, and I sort of imagine both of these people, that they are doing God's work. And, uh, you know, so this is what happens when um, you get to a point where um, someone is kind of like, I would say, unfairly labelled as the next Hitler. Now, you can not like Donald Trump for a lot of reasons. You cannot like him because of his brashness. You cannot like him because of his apparent vulgarity or his egotism that comes across. You might not like him for a number of reasons. You might, might not like him because he appears unstatesman-like in the way that he speaks. Uh, there can be many reasons why you don't like him. You can not like him because he doesn't buy into woke, right? But to say that he is literally Hitler which kind of like is a, how to say, an incorrect use of language, because he could only really be figuratively Hitler, not literally Hitler. Otherwise, he would be a small man with a funny moustache. And, he, you know, he's literally Donald Trump. You get what I mean? This is how stupid it all is, right? And so, you know, I don't know whether or not there are moles within his own security services who are turning a blind eye to uh, secret assassins uh, or, you know, that are turn up, or whether or not he is just basically his security is doing the best job, but there are people slipping through the net who are incredibly radicalized and have become radicalized by the far left. So therefore they really honestly believe that they are doing God's work by trying to do that. But this is the state that the world finds itself in. And if America um, in what, just over what, about six weeks from now, votes in um, 
and Kamala Harris, then basically America, with of course the backing of someone like Hillary Clinton, you know, a woman who, uh, whose name sounds like a train coming at you, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton, doesn't it? Um, yeah, um, <laughs> who basically wants to uh, bring in the rules that uh, Keir Starmer has brought in for the UK, that if you say something they don't like on social media, you will be banged up. Right. They want to turn America into what Britain has become, into what um, like a lot of the other Anglosphere countries have become. And Donald Trump, from what I can tell, wants to um, save America from, uh, from this oncoming globalism. Of course, it's not easy to tell whether or not, because, you know, I say. But he has been in power before. He has another chance to have one more term again. During the time that he was in power, he stopped the profit-making war machine. So there's an enormous amount of money invested in uh, big tech, big war, big food, big pharma, big everything, um, as it basically is, has created this corporate global dictatorship, which it wants to uh, bring in. Um, you know, and of course you've got the uh, you've got the villains of the World Economic Forum, the Zivald Economic Forum. You know, you've got those buggers as well to deal with as as well. So, yeah. Um, when I found out about this, I just thought, well, who didn't see that coming a mile off? It was obvious that something like that was going to happen again. In fact, it might happen, it might happen a third time between now and then. We can only um, hope that it doesn't um, end up in his assassination, because if he does get assassinated, f for sure, um, apart from Kamala Harris or whoever will get in, because there are no other Republican alternatives at this point, um, or they might even bring in emergency powers to stop the election. You just don't know, do you, with these fuckers? You just really don't know. But the fact is that um, America will basically be finding itself in its second civil war at this point, because, um, you know, and it will have hugely bad implications for the rest of the Western world. If they don't successfully kill him and um, Kamala Harris wins again, you know, I just think that is the end of the West for a very long time until s at some point in the future, um, you know, there can be some kind of you know, how could I say, other kind of political, I don't want to use the word revolution, but something that changes it and kind of brings it back to the way it was, or, or like people start fighting for freedom, like the way they tried to do, you know, in the Eastern Bloc in the old days. Um, so, yeah, this is what happens, you see. Um, I wonder, when we look back, how future historians will look at the 20th century going into the 21st century, how they will think that, you know, we ended up with these leaders who ended up pissing the money up the wall, um, allowed, neglected their own countries, allowed them to turn to shit, um, tried to um, instill a certain narrative, lost control of the narrative, and then started taking everyone's freedoms away. They'll be looking thinking, they didn't learn from history, and they had the best opportunity to learn from history of all people. They must have been really stupid. And that's what I think um, will happen. Now, while this has been going on in America, in the UK, one um, news item that caught my eye was the fact that Hugh Edwards, newsreader, um, famous news anchor for the BBC, been around for a very long time, actually announced the Queen's death as well um, on the BBC News. Um, basically, it's been going on for quite a while. We've known about him, um, was it, uh, paying for indecent images of, um, what was it, minors, so to speak. And uh, what did he get? A slap on the wrist, basically. He got a six-month suspended sentence. And for those of you who um, do need to be informed about what that means, it means he doesn't go to prison. You know. However, if he re-offends within the next two years and he's sentenced, he has six months added to it. But the fact is that he was not um, sent down. Not sent down in the aftermath of people being sent down for tweets or reposting things or sharing things on social media like X, um, Facebook and all of that. People are getting months up to two years or whatever just for saying things, keyboard warrior style. But yet um, the BBC, which seems to um, have a recurring pattern of um, having celebrities on it which like children too much in an inappropriate way, uh, and the justice system in the UK seems to be normalising this type of behaviour while at the same time punishing free speech. And this has happened so many times before in history where, um, you know, they, uh, they, they go lenient on the wrong ones. Um, 
a while, you know, uh, wanting to fill prisons up with political prisoners, dissidents, that sort of thing. We've seen this before. And I suppose it was only a matter of time before uh, the Western world would lose its freedom. But that's just where it is at the moment. It's lost its direction. It's lost its way. It's become soft. It's become complacent. It's no longer pioneering. It's no longer innovating in the same way that it was. And economically, it's not growing. So the West, to me, from the way I see it, is becoming pretty obsolete. It's becoming a legacy brand. Now, yeah, you can look at the legacy of the West and think it done amazing stuff because it, it brought in, you know, uh, ways of thinking. It brought in, you know, a lot of people say that the Enlightenment, the scientific Enlightenment, was a, a good thing. A lot of people say that the uh, Renaissance, well, the Renaissance paintings were very good. It brought art to levels of spirituality. Um, the uh, what you would call the neoclassical architectural movement, which built amazing, you know, beautiful buildings all over Europe, and you know every country in old Europe has got them, and you even have a few of those types of buildings in America. So the 19th century was a great time when they started, you know, going back to Gothic architecture, Greco-Roman architecture. So the West um, was at once interested in uh, beauty and heritage and all of this stuff. And then of course, you know, the Industrial Revolution started in England, um, brought us the train, brought us all a load of machines, it technologically advanced us well into the future. And then of course, uh, one day after the Second World War, someone thought it was a great idea for the first world countries now to no longer manufacture. We could just get the third world to do it and they do it cheaper. And as a result, we stopped making stuff. And in, uh, in the process of doing that, um, we don't really have anything anymore. It's like the, the West lost its purpose, lost its reason for being. And um, we're just creaming off service economies, basically, while um, getting the rest of the world to make everything. And this has put China in a position where China makes everything now. And, uh, you know, what's the West doing? It's dying. It's, uh, it's run out of juice. It's, um, it's basically, Every dog has its day, so to speak, and it can't carry on in the way that it used to anymore. And while this is happening, while there are some very fast demographic shifts happening in the Western world, um, they want to control the narrative. They want to control how people think, how people talk and all of that. And have we not seen this happen before in history? With, um, you know, Eastern Europe, um, the Soviet Union, I suppose you could include Nazi Germany into that as well, because you know, in a, in a lot of ways, uh, the uh, present Western world does seem to be behaving like 1920s, 1930s Weimar Republic Germany. And um, you know what came next? So uh, you take it right the way back when ancient Rome fell. It was a time when people became complacent, became decadent, when the rulers, um, you know, how could I say, uh, became a bit power crazy when they started devaluing their own economy and then some, how can I say, agreeable to the wrong sorts of people started opening the gates and letting the barbarians in. We're back where we started. I don't know, do we ever learn? I'm sure that we don't. And a lot of people have been saying that freedom itself is an aberration. It's, uh, you know, the freedom, individualism that we've got used to in the West is, a, is an aberration. It's something that doesn't naturally occur in human societies. And it took us a long time to, uh, to get to that point. And, um, you know, a lot of people have been warning that we're only a generation away from tyranny um, at best, and we need to be eternally, constantly vigilant as a result of that. And this is uh, the problem that we find ourselves in now. We become too complacent in the West, and this is what's happening. And I personally think that whatever, you know, yeah, it has a good legacy. Um, we can look back at the West and think, yeah, it brought the world some really great things. Um, and a lot of people are still holding on to that notion that the West is the best. But it's now a legacy brand part of the world, and other countries in the world are developing and growing faster than the Western world. And a lot of other countries in the world have still kind of got the old traditions that actually acted as a form of social cohesion or glue holding the countries better together. The Philippines here is a very good example of that, you know? But unfortunately, um, the West seems to be losing it. It's become very directionless. It's like, um, it's like it lost its compass, it lost its rudder. 
The ship of the Western world lost both its compass and its rudder and is now adrift, running amok. And as a result, we cannot trust the leaders because, I mean, they're, they're just clearly not to be trusted. And that's just the, the way it is. It's very unfortunate that it's got to this point. It also gives out a very bad message, you know, when you think that like people like Hugh Edwards only get a slap on the wrist while people actually trying to speak their mind and maybe not being tactful enough but and maybe saying horrible things, but nevertheless people only just speaking their mind on social media are at risk of becoming political prisoners while at the same time high profile nonces get off scot free. It doesn't make you anyone, and at the same time, you know, why, uh, what I was to say, yeah, the, the present Labour Party cabinet now are having clothes donated to them. So, you know, Keir Starmer gets free glasses, free suits. His wife becomes a fashionista with clothes um, donated to her by a donor as well. And it just makes the UK look very Hunger Games like right now, does it not? You know? And um, I don't know how they can't see just how out of touch they are or how tone deaf they are. I don't know how they cannot see that, you know? I mean, they're, they're what you call an impenetrable Islington bubble must be so hermetically sealed at this point that they really cannot see what's going on. And, um, you know, do we want people like that in power? People like that should be nowhere near power, but that's what we've got. And, it, uh, and the only reason why it's like this is because a lot of people have lost faith in the power structures entirely. So what can be done about it? I honestly don't know. I really honestly don't know at this point what could be done about that. All I know is that if anyone can get out of the West, they should do. And they should stay out of the West and just think that the West, well, it had its time. It was great while it lasted. It brought the world some good stuff. But at this point, it is just merely its legacy and nothing else. So, you know, what can we say? What can be said about any of that? Maybe there are other places that can be gone to. I don't um, agree or subscribe to the idea of, mm, yeah, but where else is there to go? There's nowhere. If you, don't, if you have that mentality, you don't go if you want to. Now, you could be one of the people who want to stay and fight for a better place than you have. You could be one of these people who wants to stay and be politically active in the West. And all right, fair enough and good luck. I'm not going to say that it's a bad thing because, again, I honestly don't know and I don't really want to be too biased or opinionated one way or the other when it comes to stuff like this because you just don't know. The future will tell, but none of us have a crystal ball and that's the thing. Right, I think I'm going to uh, leave it at that. I don't know if I've really said anything in this video. It's one of those days, you know, sometimes I kind of feel a little bit uninspired. Nevertheless, hope you like the turdish sketch at the beginning. Um, you know what, I've been pissing around with special effects and um, you might notice the transitions on this one being a little bit different as well. I've, uh, I'm now using a different video editor. I've got one called, uh, oh God, what's it called again? I can't remember now. Power something, can't remember. <laughs> so useless my brain is at the moment. Anyway, it's better than Mavavi video editor, which I was using before in a lot of ways. It has a lot more facilities and it's quite affordable as well. So, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm using that one now and um, I hope you can see the improvements in it. Right, I'll leave it at that. See you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.